All right, so we got us an old schoolhouse here, built in 1880. Let's go in here and take a look, see what's going on. Supposedly, he just keeps cycling on and off. How's it going? Good. So you said it was acting a little funny. I got a question. Sure. This is definitely an older, cool building. It's completely empty, so there's not much in here to hold heat. Now, I was given some of the lowdown on how things work here. You got all your registers above the windows up there, and they kind of go all the way around. It's a spidered trunk line, basically, all the way around the corners. Now, this is quite unique. They're going to bring in duct work to pull the return off the ground, which I worked on this place long before being here, and it used to work with a simple pulse furnace. As uh, far as I know, just fine. But we have state-of-the-art, fancy control system. As you can see, it's 15 degrees outside. It's set for 70 degrees, and it's 64 degrees in here. Let's go see what's going on. I, I, I got up there and kind of poked my head. I had to bring in my eight-foot ladder to get down the door. Then they've got the straight thing. I didn't feel like bringing some other big ladder over. Let's go ahead and go over here and see what's going on. You can see here the old original ceiling. You got trunk line there. Just kind of spider webs to all different branches of the building. Here's your return. Every old building has to have internet. This thing's an old beast, but man, 1880, that's pretty neat. Man, those are some big, look at that tendon joint. That is really cool. It's calling for heat. At least it's grounded, I guess. Not seeing any blinks on the lights, at least from here anyhow. And the gas pressure looks kind of low. Is this a two-stage? Nope. There goes the fan, fan's coming on. Filter was changed November. Turned off again, never flashed anything. Let's see if we can double check a few things here on this. Make sure we're not getting water in the pressure switch hose or nothing. It's this thing, I'd rather see it drain back to the, the uh, collector box there. I don't think that's it. The flame sensor runs golden red, which I've never been a fan of when that happens. Yep, there it goes again. I'm gonna jump this thing out. I know you're not supposed to run these in super, super cold weather. Like you're not supposed to turn the house down super cold because then your return air is way, way too low. Something's a little kooky here. Looked at the thermostat. It uh, seems to be calling consistently. Some of it looks like it's in foreign language. Not real sure what that says. Uh, they might speak Dutch or something, I don't know hit that and it's like huh uh-huh so i don't understand how that's interior exterior i mean those are in english but the hell's the rest of it i ain't sure oh chinese oh it's so easy to switch all your languages why would you leave that as an option i don't seem very smart looks like you got russian that makes it a little easier now look at it Use button and screen to operate it. Look at that, it's so much simpler. It's not turning off down here. Let's go ahead and jump it out upstairs and see what's going on. I'm not sure why the installers ran this way over here then back over to there, other than they probably didn't have the right size pipe, but it really makes it hell to get into this freaking control system. Got an on and off switch there. Probably gonna get rid of this door switch so that I can work on it with the door off. That'd be a lot easier. Just kind of curious if the motor's running slower than it should be going. That's why I'm checking this. It's rated for 10, it's right at 10. So we don't have a problem with that. I'd like to know why it's shutting off though because it does not blink a code of any sort. So what we're probably gonna do is jump this thing with a jumper and see if it continually stays running. You got your current sensing relay here for the controls. So they verify that the blower is on. And uh, short of that, it's just, you know, a regular thermostat. Going to clean up that flame sensor. Not real thrilled with the way that looks. It's kind of crusty looking. 
my usual pr process is make sure the blower capacitor is fine. Make sure your flame sensor is clean, condensate traps if it had one. Make sure the pressure switches are draining back because, I mean, I've had all those problems so many times over the years. Making sure that it's grounded. Kind of going through all these same things every time. It's, you know, a double check of these every time. I like to make sure what time uh, delay we have for uh, off temperature is. Looks like it's set for about... Uh, 120 seconds or so that should be fine especially as cold as it is in here those are some of the things I always check no matter what so get looking at this you can see the wires have gotten pretty warm that uh, crimp on there pulled off that oh, rollout switch there has gotten a little warm carrier has a tendency to run their burners really hot on the corners I wonder if it's under firing possibly the burners just seem really low what I'm going to do is get this wire possibly moved away from this here so that uh, it can be held out and away from the burners more instead of the radiant heat going right up to it. Um, they do have this insulated piece up on top here. That's probably trapping more heat in. Either way, it should be built for that, but generally you don't insulate the top of the furnace like that, I'm assuming. There's a reason they did that, possibly. I don't know if they were trying to keep the heat in well. Originally, this was a 90 percenter. Um, and then, you know, that obviously got changed to an 80, which we don't normally recommend running a 90 up in the attic when it's uh, cold weather like this. Not usually the greatest idea. I got the flame sensor cleaned up, got that wire on there, repositioned that so it's not over top of those slits that are in the metal there. Brought the flame sensor out the front. Find it peculiar that it's doing what it's doing. It should be giving you a code. Otherwise, it's got to be the control dropping out. Uh, the control here or the control that's running it. So let's take a peek and see what we get. So before we go jumping it out, I'm going to watch it and see if it drops voltage out to the control. Feel whether or not we can uh, feel any heat radiating back more than normal, which sure we've got some probably up on top here but doesn't feel too bad in there little disturbance with the blowers off so what do you expect i'm pulling a little colder air in because i'm up here in the attic area but don't think it's going to be that big of a deal it just makes it easier to get to the uh, wires to see what's going on otherwise they're going to have to trim into their stuff and they probably aren't going to like that I'm going to make use of my min-max feature there. I've got my jumpers going to my uh, leads. Just going to watch it for a bit and see if it drops out. It was doing it usually every so many minutes, so it shouldn't take long doing it. Let's just watch and see what happens. It may not do it at all. It could have been a flame sense issue, and then maybe it only trips out so many times before it finally goes into a hard lockout. But it should have gave me something. It's been running now for five and a half, six and a half minutes. Hasn't dropped out once. I got checking the codes on this. 14 is what it would be if it drops out enough times to actually get to a, faint, a flame failure. So to kind of mimic the flame failure, let's go ahead and pull the flame sensor wire off. There we go. Should drop out. That don't make sense not tripping out so it never blinked so it's not flame failure so why is it running now and it didn't before then so see how I kind of decided to do that wanted to make sure that it was just flame because I figured well maybe it's just a stupid flame sensor issue all right we got the door back on there it's running fine so far we restarted the stopwatch I'm gonna go grab a thermometer stick it in the return supply and see if we got a normal rise across this thing. They're already running on a blue speed, which is a medium, medium highish area. See where we're at on that. So uh, right now it's kind of confusing because like I said, didn't have any codes when it shut down. It was almost like the controller was shutting off and then coming back on, which you got all this fancy stuff in here when you really could get away with just a basic thermostat. Yeah, people forget to turn them on, turn them off, but you know that stuff is not cheap. I'm surprised we're not seeing anything coming out. It's like 15 degrees out here. Definitely not the most energy efficient building in the world. Front doors are not insulated. Literally normal doors. I mean, you're gonna have a hard time heating this thing, that's for sure. You've got cold infiltration on every wall in here. 
Well, it's everywhere along the corners. Oh I mean, my goodness. Yeah, it's like. And then you got your outlets there. 42 degrees coming through the outlet. And here's a big, here's a nice spot here. This here is the coldest sections, 45 degrees. And, you know, you add that with the, the windows here that, I mean, I can, I mean, it's coming through good and cold there. I can feel the wind blowing through even with the storm window. I mean, you can see the cobweb there wiggling. I mean, you got some massive radiant cold coming in. I mean, that's, exactly. you, ever, you ever seen a chest freezer? It's the same principle. They don't have a fan on it. It's just got cold walls. Right. Yeah, so the door's running 36 degrees. We got 73 degrees coming back. Okay, so we are at uh, 118. So let's say 73 is what it is. So 83, 93, 103, 113. So 45 degree rise. We're right in that ballpark. We're not tripping limit. And even if we were tripping limit, it should be blinking a light when it shuts off. I still think that stupid controller is shutting down on me. I'm gonna jump this dumb thing. It did it when I got up here. It was it was just off. It was starting over again. And there's the temperature rise. It's good up to 50 degrees to 80 degrees. So we're well in range of that. It's not tripping the limit. Everything looks hunky dory there. Definitely not convenient on this stupid wiring to jump it. So I'm gonna jump that sucker from out here. That'll That'll make the control guys happy and fuzzy inside. What we ended up doing, stripping the wire back a little bit. Got r and jumped. Let's watch it for a bit and see what's going on. I mean, it's, it's the reason why I'm doing this is because that control board there is not blinking anything. It's not acting like there's any safety devices opening. And that's why I'm thinking it's the control stuff. Everybody blames the controls and half the time it's not it, but in this instance here, it does seem like it is. And the fact's still going to remain that this building is not energy efficient. It's running its living butt off trying to keep up. The furnace is a 89,000 out and 110,000 in. We got the furnace jumped so far six minutes, six minutes, no dropout yet. All the controls and stuff is coming back to this little gizmo. That's kind of got everything built into it. I mean, you got your fan sensing wire, you've got your supply air temperature sensor, and I think that's your internet, and there's the thermostat wires. I was kind of curious if we were having issues with possibly uh, the wires maybe not being real tight. Did not see any wires that were scalped. They all look like they're tucked under there properly. Nothing's pulling out. Everything looks fine there. What I ended up doing, and I don't think this is gonna do anything, I put an isolation relay in there. The isolation relay basically makes the R&W close. It's something we had to do long ago with digital thermostats, but after having a little discussion with the control guys, it was brought to my attention that this thermostat's been changed two or three times with different manufacturing brands. Because of the setup of the wireless deal here, the usual one that we would use is cost prohibitive. So to say the least, we're making do with this thing. There's another thing that I was not told about, and that has to do with the discharge sensor. This thing may have its own logic circuitry that's shutting it down because it's getting over 125 degrees. You've, supposedly these are compensated for direct radiant heat, which is right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait and see if it drops out with the isolation relay, which I think it's going to. If that's the case, I'm gonna yank the discharge sensor out and let it dangle. Because what's happening is the discharge sensor thinks the system's overheating. In a normal system where it's 70 degrees in a house, 125 wouldn't be so bad, you know? They came up with some pre-set uh, things that doesn't sound like they're adjustable, which once again, I'm not a controls guy. Wasn't even aware this thermostat existed. All I know is, is a generic regular thermostat would do a fairly decent job, but that doesn't give them the options that they want. Then also, 
Combine that with the ductwork that has so properly distributed all the way around the building, the airflow sucks. So the a heat stays on the ceiling. It comes over, recirculates into the furnace, and causes it to trip limit, which is why they're running the fans down there. That's also why they've got boxes to do a temporary check there to see whether or not we can get the heat off the floor. My feeling is, should have came in and pounded it with, you know, a couple bigger registers, got some airflow circulated around the building. It'd be nice if there was something down there to hold the heat in the building too. Empty buildings don't hold heat very well. Uh, or worst case scenario, put too many splits in and call it a day. Or just don't use the building in the middle of the winter when it's, you know, 10 degrees out. It's just not energy efficient. Um, it's a neat building, beautiful old building, history. But this design here, I guess, has been in for a long time. And although the furnace is newer, the original furnace had the same problems. All these little details were left out of the discussion with me. I was able to hear it click, which is kind of nice. We were right in there at about 112. So this thing must think 125 is too much. If you think about it, if it was 70 in the building, 80, 90, 100, there's three, put 25 onto that. That's 40, 50, 55, you're kind of in your right area. Problem is, it's false. And, um, we can move this down further into uh, supply down below. Um, at this point, yeah, I don't know. I did hear the relay kick on almost immediately after. We went ahead and repositioned it down here, which for temporary purposes, that should be fine should work better still doesn't make up for the building losing heat like it's doing but it's just gonna set there for now that's a lot better than it uh, cycling the furnace off every couple minutes I just tripped again at this point that needs re repositioned the building 62 in here it's constantly shutting off you've got all that heat just coming across the ceiling I can feel all the heat right here what I ended up doing was pulling that sensor back out of there, moved it over to the return, got it mounted down there. That should at least allow it to keep running. The return, you'll at least be able to see that the room temperature is coming up in temperature. Uh, it'll obviously be warmer than what the wall stat over there is. So you will at least be able to see more of an immediate change. It's not right but neither is the way that thermostat's programmed. I have no information on it. The control guys do that. Uh, at least I've done as much as I can do. So anyhow, that's gonna wrap this one up. We got it running. Just, uh, that's as much as I can do for today. Looking back, when I checked the voltage, first thing to see whether or not it was dropping out from the thermostat call, it never dropped out, but it was 30 degrees in the attic. And when checking that, you're sucking that cold air in there. The temperature rise would have been lower, so it would have never gotten to that 125 area or whatever it's set at, who knows. Never seen that thermostat in my life. It's something we don't usually use. One of the control guys used it because it was a special instance, what we needed. But that's the reason why it ran and why it took a little longer. Not uh, knowing what you know was going on there didn't help a whole lot. Uh, not being told that there was multiple issues going on over and over that we've had multiple different trips out there if there was an easy way to actually measure voltage to see if it was dropping out that would have been the fastest easiest way to have done it but there wasn't when i jumped it it jumped and it ran the whole time and that was a pretty good clear indication that it was a thermostat or a controls issue but there's so many other issues there the ductwork issue the velocity of the airflow the temperature rise you know all those things if the cardboard water heater boxes weren't on there it would have been tripping limit all right well that's enough of that one let's see what else we can get into